The UN Climate Change Conference, COP25, is going on in Madrid, Spain from December 2nd to 13th. Around 200 countries are negotiating an agreement to determine their commitments to the goal of limiting climate change. These countries, which are parties to the UN Convention on Climate Change, are aiming to keep global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels or even 1.5 degrees Celsius, to limit the amount of greenhouse gases emitted by human activity to the same levels that trees, soil and oceans can absorb naturally, to review each country's contribution to cutting emissions every five years so they scale up to the challenge, for rich countries to help poorer nations by providing climate finance to adopt to climate change and switch to renewable energy. The Paris Agreement was adopted in 2015 in Paris. After that, the process of signing and joining the agreement has been going on and the agreement will formally go into force next year. COP25 is the final COP before we enter 2020, where the rules for the Paris Agreement are being finalized. In Paris in 2015, countries announced certain nationally determined contributions that they will meet in the next five years by 2020. Only six countries are currently on track to meet these. The current NDCs are not sufficient to mitigate climate change. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said at a pre-summit event this year, in the crucial 12 months ahead, it is essential that we secure more ambitious national commitments, particularly from the main emitters, to immediately start reducing greenhouse gas emissions at a pace consistent to reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. What this means is that the emission reductions from climate pledges need to be roughly tripled to achieve the 2 degrees Celsius target. And if one wants to achieve the impossible target of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, it would require the reductions to be fivefold. According to the UN, if the current emission levels persist, there will be a 3.2 degree increase by 2100. To achieve the goal of limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, emissions would need to be cut by 7.6% every year from today to 2030. The Paris Agreement had predicted that this would be necessary and that NDCs would need to be reviewed every five years. So the main objective of these annual COPs is to find solutions to these problems in a way that is just to all the countries party to the agreement. Many countries have individual targets related to climate change. For example, the UK government has committed to cutting greenhouse gas emissions right down to net zero by the year 2050, making it one of the first major economies to set such a target. On the other hand, we have the United States. President Donald Trump set in motion the process of withdrawing from the Paris Agreement, calling it detrimental to US interests and economy. US will be out of the agreement by November 4th, 2020, a day after the US presidential elections. Few are convinced that even the UK will achieve its medium and long-term targets as not enough measures have been put in place to achieve them. Average global temperatures have been rising since we started burning fossil fuels about 200 years ago. Burning of fossil fuels is increasing the amount of carbon dioxide and other harmful greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, causing the planet to get hotter year by year. This is ultimately causing disturbance in the environmental balance. Scientists say that carbon takes more than a decade to get absorbed by the Earth. Carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere mainly from fossil fuel combustion, but also by forest fires and some natural processes. The gas can be absorbed from the atmosphere into the tissues of growing plants or absorbed by the waters of Earth's oceans. Currently, however, Earth's forests, oceans and ecosystems are only absorbing about half of the carbon dioxide emitted by human activities. The Paris Agreement discussed some measures to resolve these problems and one of these was carbon budgeting. What is carbon budgeting? A carbon credit is a permit or certificate allowing the holder, such as a company, to emit carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases. The credit limits the emission to a mass equal to one ton of carbon dioxide. The objective of carbon budgeting is to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. What it essentially does is that it allows major carbon emitters to buy carbon credits from countries that have not exceeded their emission target under the Paris Agreement. This year's COP is being criticized for being stuck on the rules of the implementation of carbon markets rather than focusing on the urgency of cutting emissions. But the major debate in these conferences is how much the developing and developed nations will contribute to the emissions reductions targets. The key to Paris Agreement is Common but Different Responsibilities, or CBDR. What is CBDR? CBDR recognizes 
that all countries are affected by and affect climate change, but not to the same degree. Since developed countries have been responsible for a majority of historical greenhouse gas emissions that led to global warming in the first place, they must also take a major share of the burden in dealing with the resulting crisis, which is not the present case. Developing countries have contributed little to greenhouse gas emissions and also require carbon-intensive investments to reduce poverty. At this year's conference, the tussle has gotten more intense in the last few days of the negotiations. Developing nations are unhappy that the matters crucial to them are not being given as much importance. For instance, a lot of time was spent dwelling on the transparency framework. Under this, developed countries have to report their climate change mitigation efforts. So while a lot of time was spent debating the exact framework of reporting, the issue of adoption finance was, not, was neglected. The issue of pre-2020 stock take has also not been taken up. Palestinian ambassador Amar Hijazi said that if you don't do stock take, you can't tell where you are standing now. India's Union Environment Minister Prakash Javadekar asked, have developed countries delivered on their promises? Unfortunately, they have not met their Kyoto Protocol targets. Their NDCs don't reflect ambition, and they have not enhanced their commitments. At COP25, developing countries also proposed the setting up of a finance arm under the Warsaw International Mechanism, or WIM, for loss and damage. This is to help developing countries which have suffered from extreme weather events. But the WIM does not yet address the issue of finance, which is key. Developed countries continue to oppose the idea of, fin of a finance arm under WIM. If one understands that vulnerability to climate is an add-on to pre-existing structural vulnerabilities, which are directly correlated with poverty uh, levels. If I'm richer, I can afford to, for example, move my residence away from uncomfortably hot or sea level inundated areas, move to other uh, locations. I can change what I eat. Uh, if I'm poor, I can't do any of these things. So even after a week of negotiations at COP25, no significant headway has been made. This sets a worrisome stage for what will happen next year when the Paris Agreement does kick in. Can a non-binding agreement, which has no enforcement mechanism, be enough to make countries take the commitment seriously? Thank <laughs> you.